guys. Thank you for joining me today. And as usual, I will put this up on YouTube when I can. This sermon is called Sin's Connection to Identity. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Permeate every soul, every heart, every spirit with what, with what you have to say. Hi guys, uh, this week, as many of you know, I'm an avid reader. In fact, if you go to a page called, called Rachel's Reads, you'll, you'll see um, most of what I'm reading on a weekly basis. Um, so I try and add to that weekly, so, yeah. So, I read this book recently called Something Borrowed, and, um, it's basically about how these two girls are friends, and and one friend starts having an affair with, um, with that other, her other friend's fiance, and I said, "Why am I reading this? I, like, it was just so nuts." I was like, "Why am I reading this? I don't like reading books about affairs and stuff." And I said. But I began as I read it, and then I was like, I would do a sermon on this, how, how sin happens without you meaning to and all that stuff. But as I was ruminating on this sermon, um, I, heard, I heard another sermon talking about identity and how our identity is not ours, and how it's in Christ, and it's how God sees us. So, as I thought back to the book, and the sin of sleeping with her uh, best friend's fiancé, in that case, it was about her identity, because in the book, she, um, she didn't feel like she was good enough. She felt like she was always comparing herself to her friend. Her friend was is blonde and uh, quote unquote beautiful, and always got all the guys and whatever. And she saw herself. Her identity is less than. And so, I believe one of the reasons why she started the affair with her best friend's fiancé was like, now I've gotten something of yours, you're always taking uh, the glory for yourself, and now I've got something of yours. And I was thinking of how um, sin happens when we when we have a kind of crisis of identity when we don't know who we are when we don't know who whose we are and because she always compared herself because these friends were friends for forever they knew each other since really small kids and they they were friends in high school and whatever and the friend with the fiance always got her way always knew how to manipulate situation and the and the girl 
was all, always, as she saw herself, stuck behind the other girls. So um, the night of her 30th birthday was the first time uh, she slept with her um, best friend's fiance. And I was, I was thinking about this sermon I heard um, in relation to identity. Uh, and I said, that's it. And one of the reasons why she's, why I believe she slept with her best friend's fiance was because she didn't know how great she was. And I, I began to think of sin and the reasons for it. And, and one of the key reasons for it is we don't know how how great we are and who how great God has made us. Uh, this uh, Priscilla Shire, the one who was preaching this sermon about identity, um, was talking about because sometimes um, the the key thought to sin we think this thing is better than what I have. Um, this thing is better than what I have, or I'm so less than, so this is what I deserve. So it's a problem with identity with ourselves, or it's a problem with thinking what they have is better than what I have. So we either go after it and fall into sin. Sin is usual. Sin is, to me, missing the mark. Um, going, going um, um, for less than what God has for us. Um, and the reason why we set up for less is we don't know our worth. And I think when you when you have a sin issue deep down, it's usually a worth issue. You think if I get that thing, if I get that man, if I get that person. I'm going to feel better, it's going to be better, or if I do that thing, it's going to feel better. And usually, it does for a time. It feels good to steal that money, it feels illicit and wrong to have that affair, it feels good, get some blood pumping. And goodness, is not celebrated in culture. So if you're uh, if you're a goody goody and always doing things right and, and moral, it's not celebrated in the culture. Like the illicit affair or the embezzling of money and all of that, that stuff is celebrated. Sin is celebrated, righteousness is not. But at the end of the day, sin will take you much further than you wish it will go, um, than you ever thought it would go. Because the first time uh, that Dart, that um, Rachel co coincidentally Dentally, this person's name is Rachel. So, the first time that Rachel slept with Dexter, she was like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? And she was so afraid. But the more that it started happening is the more he, they got comfortable with it until they were uh, sleeping together uh, several times a day. See, that's what happens with sin. 
when you first pull it off, sub, um, either you're just so afraid, uh, afraid to get caught, afraid that it's not going to do anything or whatever, afraid you're just so genuinely and you're just so afraid. Um, but the more sin gets its talents into you, the more it normal, normalizes itself. And this is what happened to Darcy. The more she slept with Dex, the more it became normalized. And that's what sin does. When you don't, when you don't know who you are, sin gives you kind of a skewed identity like you're like you would say well i'm just a a hoe a slut or whatever or i i'm i'm just horny or i just like money or i just do this or you start making excuses you start no normalizing sin and start making excuses for what you've done. I've done this. I still do this on occasion. You normalize your sin because it makes you feel more comfortable. But um, life can't be about your normal. Your life in Christ has to be about his righteousness, not your normal. What does God say about this? And he loves you and he will cover you and restore you and all that. He's the king of that. He will do that. He, shame is not of God. Um, condemnation is not of, of God. But correction, he won't condemn you, but he will lovingly correct you. And normalizing sin will just get you in deeper and in deeper. And all of a sudden, but, but take care because sin will always blow up in your face. Always. It will always blow up in your face. And the dis disastrous consequences will be, and the consequences will be disastrous. So it starts off as something fun, but it ends up to be disastrous. So, so it's all about weighing the the cost is being with that married man or having an illicit affair or stealing that money or cheating on your taxes or gossiping about that church friend instead of and calling it prayer but it's really gossiping is that really um going to benefit you or are, are you just going to just lose yourself? Well, what people don't tell you about, about sin is it feels good in the moment, but afterwards, usually, you get find, found out and the consequences are disastrous. And the pieces you have to pick up the emotional pieces, sometimes the physical pieces, sometimes the mental pieces you have to pick up are so vast and, and the Lord can restore anything. But isn't it better to just stay away from it and just and just wait till God gives you what he's going to give you, isn't it better um, to, to wait for God to 
give you that single man instead of take, taking someone who is not yours and and using them for 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 a night or whatever you are remember i said sin is a, about worth um we often we often talk about the sin but we don't talk about the worth of a person for a person uh, to get themselves involved in sin, they're first, they, they first have to have a, a self-worth problem. They don't know how great they are, so they settle for less. They settle for that high. They settle for that hit. They settle for getting drunk because they don't know that their worth is so much greater than what they see. Their worth is so much greater than what's in that pipe. Their worth is so much greater than, than whatever partner is in their bed or partners or whatever. So the sin problem is a worth problem. So, because when you go back to Eve in the garden, that that is the first instance of sin. And the devil told her all this, like, you will be God or whatever. The devil tried to tempt her with what she already had. But she didn't know all the devil was tempting her with was already inside of her. All the knowledge that she craved was already inside her. All she had to do was tap into it. The sin problem is first a self-worth problem. And the reason why people end up in habitual sin and continue making the same mistakes or whatever, continue gossiping, continue backbiting, continue all that. They don't, they have no idea that they're worth more than that. They, they know usually that they are better than that, but they don't know that they're worth more than that. They don't know that they're worth more than one night. So they settle because, you know what, this is all I'm going to get, so screw it, I'm just doing whatever. Uh, but it's, you are so, you are so special to God. I wish you saw yourself the way God sees you. Because that's the main problem with sin. Um, because sin makes you believe the lie that this is all it is. Or all I have is to be negative. Or all I have is to be uh, this. And this will never change. Or my life will always be this way. No, 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 no. Those are lies that the devil, uh, the, who is the father of lies, that is telling you. Life will not always be terrible. You will not always be struggling. You don't have to steal. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You don't have to sleep around to feel like a man. You don't have to gossip or put other people down to fit into that small-minded group, to feel like a person. You can come up higher and know that you're worth more. Know that you're worth more. Every sin issue is mostly connected to a worth issue. I remember um, 
I remember AJ McQueen from the Backstreet Boys uh, talking about his drug addiction. And he said the reason that he, one of the reasons that he started on drugs is because he didn't like himself. He didn't like himself. So that's one of the reasons that he started on drugs. Because remember I said the sin issue is basically connected most times to self-worth and loving yourself and who God has created you to be. The creator of the world made you with your personality, your hair color, your skin color, everything about you he made specifically. And he loves you so much, beloved. Um, I just, um, I just want to tell you to come up higher and, and how do you start thinking better of yourself? Well, you start by adopting the way God sees you. And let that trans transfer into the way you see you. Because I think that a lot of people don't really understand how beautiful they are to God. They see their mistakes, they see their shortcomings, and they're they're like, how how could God love me? God loves you because he made you. God doesn't make things by accident or mistake. He made you a man because you're supposed to be a man. He made you a woman because he's you're supposed to be a woman. That was not a mistake. That was not a mistake. And the thing is to go to God and say, hey, I'm struggling with the identity, with with my born identity. Help me with this because I feel that I'm supposed to be someone else. And I think by us not talking about the issue in a loving way. We blocked out a whole set of people by calling them crazy or weird or what whatever we we use. And um but we have to understand that um people in certain communities are still are, are people that God loved. You know, God just, God didn't die, Jesus didn't die for Christians. He died for everyone. He loves everyone. And he wants people to come into the knowledge of Christ and form their, their identity on what Christ calls them, not only what they call themselves, not what the world calls them, not what the world says is okay or not okay or whatever, but what he calls them. Because the thing about God is he made you, he knows why he made you a black man. He knows why he made you a Hispanic woman. It's not chance or circumstance that you came out the way you came out. It's by God's design. The creator of the universe designed you specifically with the personality you have, with the skin color you have, with everything. And you're, and you'll be like, how do I increase my self-esteem? Well, you increase your self-esteem by um, finding out what God says about you. He says, 
you're a royal priest, priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And he said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. David said that about himself. And Jeremiah, and the Lord said to, Je to Jeremiah that from the, I formed you in your mother's womb. You, you were formed. You, you didn't just appear here just because uh, a man and a woman had sex and you just appeared. No, no, no. You were crafted. That sperm and that egg were designed to come together with those traits, your hair color, your eye color, your disposition, your personality. Even your background was designed to, to propel you, whether, whether your parents were married, whether they were married, whether you were adopted, whether you were, whether you're uh, adopted by straight parents, whether you're adopted by gay parents, whether whatever, all of that came together divinely to create who you are. Um, I don't know who said this, but somebody said there are two uh, great days on the earth. One great day is the day you were born. The second great day is when you find out why. And to find out why, I believe that you have to go to the maker and find out why he created you. Or if you're struggling with your identity before you you think of surgery and all that stuff. Go to God and say, God, why did you make me like this? And, and what am I supposed to do with this? I'm having confusing feelings. Straighten it out for me. And he will reveal to you uh, through a process, what you're supposed to do and why you are the way you are. Because the process of life is a process of discovery and uncovery. See, God created you and when you, when you're born, you have to uncover who you are. So it's there, but you have to uncover it. So it's like life is a series of revelations about yourself. Your job is to, is to learn um, is to learn about yourself, is to uncover about yourself and discover the greatness that's inside of you. Because everybody is full with greatness and you have to discover your specific greatness and your specific greatness is not, not another's greatness. That's the thing about cock copying because when you copy you you don't uncover your greatness because you're too bu busy being like the other person uncover and discover your own greatness and uncover the uniqueness and discover the greatness that is you whatever that is and that process is a lifelong journey. It's going to take you your whole life. 
to discover who you are and and you will uncover why you're here as you go so you don't sit in a in a dark room and discover like and uncover like you have to go and as you go through life you will uncover more of who you are and discover more of who you are so when i say uncover uncover is basically revelation of who you are discover is where you find uh something new about who you are um i can't i can't think of a strong word for that but it's like where you where you find out something new about who you are um so for me after tyndale i discovered that that i liked that i was good at coming up with stories but i hated writing them down although i've written three books i hated um the the mechanics of writing but i like stories so i discovered that i was more a visual person so i discovered that i was more into 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 doing movies and television although i'm not a writer of like scripts and stuff i'm more of a vision caster like i can i can cast a broad story and have somebody that is gifted in writing write it for me so that's what how i discovered um i i i i discovered that i liked writing but i discovered that i liked telling stories but i uncovered that i didn't really like writing i'm i'm more an ambition caster like i i cast the vision in broad strokes and and get other people who are gifted in writing and scripts to write it down and don't let anyone discount your your un your uncovery or your discovery cuz sometimes when you don't fit the mold people will say oh no you can't do that that's not right so cuz i i remember i was telling a person one time that i I want to do movies but I'm not a script writer so so what I'm going to do is hire someone to write the script and, and the person said no that that's not right you can't do that um that's like saying you don't I forget what they said but they kind of discounted my this a uh, discovery process like if you like if you like doing movies you have to like do the scripts as, as well and no that's not right so so it is it is possible to be a vision caster and get people who are gifted in writing scripts to to write the script uh to go along with your vision it doesn't mean because you you like the vision ca- cast and you can come up with great stories that you have to do it all 
there are people to help you with the parts you can't do. And God has gifted you to do certain parts. But maybe not everything. And the Lord will fill in the parts that you can't do, that you're not gifted. Not that you can't do, but um, that you're not gifted to do. Because somebody else out there I know is gifted to write my vision for the story and probably uh, probably quite a few people just god hasn't brought those resources to me yet but he will in his time so guys thank you so much for being with me and doing this with me i really 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 appreciate it I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. And hopefully for the for the YouTube users, this will be up on YouTube. I'm hoping this week. Um, along with my other sermons that I haven't put on YouTube yet. So I'll see you. Bye.